Hi guys, welcome to the Integrate Yourself podcast. Today, um, Allison and I um, have a wonderful guest. Her name is uh, Catherine Luciano, and she's an athletic director at the Concourse Athletic Club in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, she's been in the fitness industry as a personal trainer, a manager, and now director um, for about 14 years. Her uh, story is an incredible one. She's had um, s some amazing changes and some developments that have really helped her progress into a, a new way of thinking and now is uh, kind of opening up herself to um, more of um, some of the work of like Ray Pete and uh, has looked into the book of um, How to Heal Your Metabolism by Kate Deering. Uh, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and jump in. And uh, Catherine, if you could go ahead and tell us your story and um, tell our listeners uh, a little bit about your journey. Sure. Um, so my story starts when I was 20 years old. Um, I was in college and I was headed to Italy, actually. And um, I had never been on a plane. I had a pretty serious boyfriend at the time. And uh, I'd never been away from him, never been away from home, any of that stuff. Um, so it was a very, very stressful time for me. And um, I was having some like stomach pains and, um, and just kind of it felt like nervous feelings, but it made me sick though. So um, at the time, the doctor had given me some uh, pretty strong but still, uh, well, they weren't over the counter, pretty strong prescription sort of antacids that did help a little, but um, I ended up going to Italy and, um, and things progressed from there. And um, I was getting kind of crazy joint swellings while I was there. And upon my return, the things kept kicked back up again. Um, and it turned out that through several tests and, um, and further issues that just kind of didn't make any sense. They deemed that I had uh, what was called vasculitis, which was an inflammation of the blood vessels, and it was a systemic autoimmune issue. Um, so nine and a half weeks through the hospital um, with pretty much every test you can imagine as a 20 year old with steroids and chemo, um, it was not a good time. Uh, I had gained 50 pounds from steroids, um, lost my hair from chemo, and being a 20 year old female just um, was pretty devastating. Um, they were unable to tell me what caused it or where it came from, but it is in the family of lupus, but they said that it wasn't fatal, but without knowing exactly what caused it, they could never say that I was cured of it, only that I was in remission and showed no signs of it after the really strong heavy doses of chemotherapy and steroids. Um, so at this point in my life, I was, um, trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life and whatnot. But after college, I went to work for an incorporation company and doing electronic forms design and um, intranet applications, which was not as fun as it sounds. <laughs> um, it, was, uh, it was a pretty dull kind of, you know, you sit in a cubicle and you just sit at a desk all day. And, um, and so I knew that that was not going to take me through the rest of my life. So um, having been through what I had been through, I wanted to find out more about nutrition, but also diabetes runs in my family. And I had decided that I was going to take control of my life and I was going to tell other people that they could too. Um, I knew that nutrition would be the answer. So I enrolled in college, um, post-college, and I was going to then obtain a registered dietitian um, license um, and schooling. And I was going to specifically do diabetes education. Um, so after enrolling in school and working a full-time job, I knew that I was going to be doing this, you know, one Saturday a week. So it was going to take a thousand years and, um, and that I needed something else to help, you know, through that. And so I could get away from that cubicle job and I turned to personal training. So I enrolled in a hands-on course that was 500 hours or so, and it, it had a nutrition component to it. And, um, and I completed that course successfully and, Right after I graduated, I was asked to become an instructor for the course, which um, scared the hell out of me, to be honest, because in college, if I had to do a paper or stand up in front of the class, I dropped the class. <laughs> <laughs> so the thought of trying to stand in front of a class and teach people what I had just learned was like a hell no, I'm not doing that situation. <laughs> um, 
but at this point now, this is nine years into um, or post vasculitis stage. So nine years in, and I actually needed a kidney transplant because of the damage to my kidney from it not receiving blood from the vasculitis. Um, so at that time, I had completed the personal training course. I had left my corporate job, um, so I was no longer sitting in a cubicle. And I went to work for a physical therapy place that my instructor, he and his brother co-owned. Um, so that was a great start for me to, you know, get some hands on with some low level clients, patients kind of a thing. Um, and it afforded me the ability to have health insurance and things like that as I went for the kidney transplant. So um, I was in the hospital post transplant when my instructor came to me and said, hey, we need an instructor and kind of asked if I would teach. And, um, and I told him he was nuts and there was no way I was doing it, but um, I ended up accepting it and it was the best thing I ever did. But um, that kind of started my fitness journey, so to speak. So I taught the course, personal training course with the nutrition component. I gave up on my uh, nutrition degree just because it was gonna take too long and it seemed like this was kind of coming together anyway. Um, so after a few years, I moved to Georgia where I became a manager. It just seemed to fit a teacher to a manager was very similar. I was still able to share information and I could help trainers kind of learn more and things like that. So it was an easy transfer, an easy fit. And, um, and my career took off. So uh, after a year or so as a manager, I was promoted to a regional manager. Um, a few years after that, then I was called by a different company and I went to work for them. And um, but my just my journey for information and knowledge just never stops. Mm -hmm. um, so this now I'm 42 now. So it's 22 years after the vasculitis and 13 years into my kidney transplant. And I'm, I'm still seeking out different knowledge. But um, a year ago, everything kind of changed. So at 41, well, first I'll say they lied. It didn't go downhill at 40. It took to <laughs> 41. Um, but there was a whole host of things that happened all together, which um, I've now put together what it was. When I was 40, when I said I had left to go into a different company, I worked for a company for four years that was extremely stressful. I was fitness director there, but we were short staffed for the four years. And I did the job of anywhere from two to four people during my four years. It was a very turbulent time. There was a lot of changeover in that company. Um, and it just, it never settled down. And the stress just kept building and building and building. And at the time I was also on birth control, which I had been on since I was 15. Mm. Um, so that'll come back into play, obviously. Um, so I decided that I wasn't gonna allow that job to kill me. I was turning 40. And um, so I sought out a different job, which led me here and to this position. But I took two weeks off and went to the beach uh, for my 40th birthday, went to Miami, you know, and, um, and quit that job. But from all the stress building, my blood pressure had just been sort of way high. So that's a huge concern to my kidney doctor, as well as to my OBGYN, because I was on a birth control pill, um, which can also make your blood pressure go high. So, um, so she takes me off my birth control pill, um, which at the time was a very, uh, it was called low, low estrin which I believe is a progesterone pill primarily. Um, so she took me off of that. My kidney doctor doubled my blood pressure medicine and I quit my job and went on vacation. So as you can imagine, my blood pressure went whoop. <laughs> so <laughs> the combination of all those three things, I no longer needed the, you know, uh, doubled blood pressure pill as well as, you know, um, really any help in controlling my blood blood pressure. Um, and I'm very, very resistant to taking any medication, any pills, especially being in the health field. You know, I'm like, no, I will get it down myself. I know how to do this, you know, um, but that job had to go. Yeah. So, so a year after being off birth control, um, changing jobs, um, and something else that I'll pull back into the story in a minute, um, last year. So it was one year later and one year ago from now, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, a year ago, about a few months prior to this, I started bleeding. Um, now, this is kind of TMI, but at the same time, it's very pertinent. Mm. Um, 
I don't get a period anymore because of chemo from when I was 20 years old. I haven't oh, wow. gotten it. I only got it because of birth control pills. When she switched me from the one I had been on since I was 15 to low, low estrogen, which would have been at this point, maybe three years ago, that's when I stopped getting a period. It didn't cause a period to come. So I didn't menstruate. Um, I didn't have concerns about that. It's quite nice, actually. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but then, um, so a year post um, coming off of any birth control medicine at all, and again, quitting my job and, okay, all those things. So a year ago, I started bleeding, and it was very concerning because obviously I don't get a period. Um, so the gynecologist was very confused. She didn't know what it was either. Um, she sent me for several tests. I had a lot of stuff done last year. And it turns out that I had super high estrogen. Mm. Oh, yeah. So I'm just thinking, okay, 42, like, well, what is that? And then I thought, wait a minute, this is a year after coming off of any hormone. Mm. Um, so it all, all made sense to me that that was pretty clear that I was bleeding now with high estrogen because of, um, you know, not being on any kind of hormone anymore. Um, so I thought, well, you know what, in my field, I've run across anti-aging doctors. I've run across lots of holistic naturopathic kind of people. And that's by far the way I prefer to go. So I sought out an anti-aging, um, group of people last year after I had my surgeries, which the surgeries didn't go so well either. Um, I continued to bleed longer than I should have. Um, so that was still a concern to me. I knew that my hormones were out of whack. So sought out the first group and um, started progesterone and lots of other things. My cortisol was high and, um, and all these things go together, which I now know, but they started me on a protocol, which number one, I didn't feel like was really doing too much. And then number two, I didn't really agree with the way that their practice was being run. So I thought, well, I'm not gonna keep seeing them. My hairdresser, who was a trainer for me at one time, she was also going to a different place and she said, you gotta go to my girl, you'll love her. She was also a trainer, is a trainer. Um, so she kind of speaks our language, like you'll love her, I love her. Um, and she says, you know, she's a year younger than me, I believe, and she was going through some similar things. Um, so she said, you know, it's now been a year and a half and it took this long, but I love her. I have the energy of when I was 20. She oh. does CrossFit now regularly, you know, and so she just bursting with energy and really lean and she's someone who had done uh, like fitness competitions and things like that. So she said, I look better now than I did when I was doing my fitness competitions. Um, so I decided, well, great, that's perfect for me. I'll switch to her. So now this was about this time last year that I switched my, my homeopathic, naturopathic, you know, um, person. And it was a very similar regimen, but she had changed some of the things. And again, you know, my hairdresser was stressing to me, look, it took me a year and a half before you know, that we got it right. So stick with it, you know, and I know it's going to work for you. So I've been sticking with everything that they told me, which now consists of progesterone um, and 5-HTP and digestive enzymes and probiotics and vitamin D and a hair pill, a methylated hair pill. Um, and, uh, and I think that was the latest of what I was taking. Um, their, their system... Um, they don't want you to take more than five things at a time. That way it's easier to kind of figure out what's working, what's not working, how do we adjust it from here. So I thought that sounded okay. Um, but again, so now we are at least a year, maybe a little bit more than a year, and I still don't feel like it has made any changes. And the things that I was experiencing, the bleeding has stopped ever since last summer, but my hair was falling out. Mm -hmm. I had significant brain fog. I felt like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Um uh, some depression, um, bloat. So as a personal trainer, of course, um, gaining weight was a huge issue to me. And as I go to my different doctors, my kidney doctor, nephrology, things like that, you know, if you try to have a conversation with them, it's, well, we're getting older mm. and I yeah. don't accept that answer. Right. And I, I literally got into a yelling match with my nephrologist because he was like, do you think I weigh the same as I did when I was 20? And I'm just like, Listen, wow. First of all, I'm not talking about you. Second of all, this yeah, exactly. Make sense. Like it, that's it doesn't just it's not overnight like that. There's no yeah. way that you just 
in a year's time gain, you know, even six pounds, 10 pounds, um, whatever it might be, it just doesn't happen that way. But also having trained other females when they had their diet right and we were working out really hard and, you know, nothing changing, I was already aware of a hormone situation that could, you know, cause you to not see the things that you think you should be able to experience if you have your fitness and nutrition, so to speak, in check. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew that already. Um, but it's, it's very frustrating to feel like you hit a wall when you talk to doctors and that you have to be your own doctor. But even when I was 20 going through MRIs and CAT scans and, and um, spinal taps and I mean, you name it, I've had every test you can think of. Even then I realized you somewhat have to be your own doctor. Mm -hmm. You have to think about you and how your body is, is talking to you or what seems to even make sense or when you just simply draw the line in the sand. Um, you know, so you get to make those calls and, and you don't have to listen to any doctor. Um, and another little thing that I try to keep in mind is just because they're a doctor, people still graduate with C grades, right? And still are passing grades. <laughs> you could have been the worst of the class and still have not a doctor, yeah. right? right? So, so that's what I keep in mind. I mean, I just, I found out that you can be a pin cushion. You could be a guessing game because at 20 years old, having every test done under the sun, everything came up negative. Mm. So I have nerve damage in one of my legs because they did a nerve biopsy. And, oh. and it's, you know, 22 years later, and it's still not much better. Mm. Um, so nerve biopsy and a muscle biopsy and, you know, again, spinal taps and things that can paralyze you, everything was negative. Mm. So, you know, it, you're kind of being beat on the head, like, none of this is working, none of this is working, and I'm going through right. hell. Mm. So, so, you know, so I, that's part of my background. So, so I don't just, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, what was the pivoting point for you? Just because I know you've been going through some changes recently uh, with your perspective. So just recently, um, still seeing um, the, the second group of holistic, you know, um, integrative medicine, I'm still not seeing the changes. And then the doctor that I was seeing, she actually left the practice. And I'm like, here we go again. Mm. If I'm about to be at that cusp, right? My hairdresser was a year and a half. If I'm about to be at that cusp of like really finding, you know, the answer here, now she leaves. So I said, well, uh -huh. let me see who I see next. Um, because the next person that I saw was actually the owner of the practice, which is a very famous person who has appeared on Dr. Oz and um, it seems like she's very well known in integrative medicine. So I thought, well, this may be great. Maybe, maybe this is what I need. So I saw her for my last visit, which was a few months ago. And, and I, she did change a couple of things. So I thought, okay, well, let's see how this part goes. Right. But in, in the meantime, funny enough, I happened to schedule a massage and chat with Maya the entire time. And we ended up talking about Kate Deering and this book of how to heal your metabolism. And I immediately bought it. And so after reading it, it was almost page by page where I felt like I was smacking myself for certain things. Like I knew that, I knew that, mm. you know? And then some things where I was going, um, that can't be right. I, that, I have to that. <laughs> but immediately started yeah. making some minor changes. And then from there, I'm doing the same thing I've always done is do some more of my own research. I am, you know, I'm now researching some of Ray Pete's articles and, and I'm looking into some of the other doctors that are mentioned through Kate's book. And because it all ties into just who I am and my journey so far. And so in the meantime, I've made, like I said, minor changes. I started incorporating the saturated fats first and cutting out all of the polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, and I just started to change my diet a little bit. And I had a, a really complete meal that was a, a Kate recommended meal, let's call it. And the next day I felt amazing. And I thought that can't be, it can't be that simple. You know, it can't be that right. simple. Yeah. And, and also, and so quick. So, yeah. so again, it just was like, this has got to be the right way. I just felt like it was telling me this is right. So I've, I've started to just, every time one of my pills runs out, I stop taking it. So, you know, not to say that that's recommended for anyone else to do if they have a similar story, but that's what I decided to do because the supplements that I take now, number one, are very expensive. 
Um, and I'm willing to spend everything, you know, to see if this works. But, you know, light bulbs keep going off, too. So where I said the thing that we call back in the, into practice is my brother actually married a vegan. And I've always been a meat eater. Um, my brother married a vegan. Um, and he became vegetarian, um, closer to a vegan for her, which makes perfect sense, you know, if that's what he chooses to do. But there was a period where he lived with me for a little while. And so I stopped buying meat just because I was like, now everything in the house, you know, you can eat as well and, and it's all good. So with her being vegan, she also ran a vegan makeup company and puts on, I guess, um, I wouldn't call them workshops, but um, like presentations and things at, um, at fairs, if you will, and runs videos of the cruelty to animals. Now, I'm a huge animal lover. So just being that close to people who, you know, stop eating meat for reasons for cruelty to animals, it made perfect sense to me. And I, I've also, I'm not a giant meat eater anyway. So I thought, well, that's easy. I can cut out meat, no problem. So I did, I cut out meat, but also as a fitness person, I've also run across, you know, pre-contest diets and nothing but meat and vegetables to get lean, you know, when you're preparing for a show. And um, so, you know, I've run through all of these diets um, throughout my you know, my journey. Um, and I'm very knowledgeable about nutrition and diets. Um, and I just don't prescribe to any kind of, um, one way or another, like it has to be all this way. I never did that to me. Moderation was always the key. Um, so even while I cut out meat for the cruelty to animal things, um, I did stop paying attention to how much protein I was getting at all. And I just thought, I just have to figure out how do I still eat now, stay lean, have enough energy now that I'm going to be vegetarian. Um, so hold on one second. Yeah. Hold on. Sorry, my dog was yelling. And so I didn't want to like, <laughs> he was yelling. <laughs> I'm like, stop yelling! <laughs> what is going on? He heard me talking about animals. Yeah, right? Right? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, shh! I'm like trying to like, stop! Stop talking! <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, now we can throw that in there. So, vegetarian for about two years. Um, with random meat here and there. But, um, so, vegetarian stopping any kind of hormone or birth control and um and stressful job and that is actually what i've concluded to be the cause of everything i went through last summer but even bigger than that as i'm reading through a lot of ray pete's articles i stumbled across another one that again my conclusion as to where my vasculitis came from back 22 years ago was a combination of stress. It's always going to be stress is always going to be one of the key components that are going to kick things into overdrive. Stress from everything I mentioned, going out of the country, leaving, you know, being away from home, being away from a boyfriend, those types of things, major, major stress. Um, hormones again, so birth control, which at this point, I don't believe any 15 year old should ever be put on a hormone or birth control pill um, because it, I just feel like that was one of the major things that shifted my hormones enough to cause a complete autoimmune disease or issue that has, you know, caused me so many complications and whatnot, because right. you can't, you can't go back. But at the same time, I accept the things that have happened in my past to get me to the point I am in. Um, and so where we were, I think with present time was I was saying that one by one, I've stopped taking digestive enzymes, then the probiotic, then the methylated hair pill, and then the, um, let's see what I run out of next, HCG. And um, at the current moment, I'm still taking vitamin D, 5-HTP, and magnesium, and my progesterone cream. And I don't, because I don't want to stop everything at once. I also right. want to be able to evaluate how is that affecting me. Um, key component, and, key component. And, and yeah, that is a huge everything component of it. Slow, yeah. yeah. If anything, so you have, slow, one you, step at a time. You've learned the best and, thing ever to do. Like most people, slow at a 
who have tried to do any of this work have been full blown into it try to do it all at once and it has been a, a it's a it's a like a re um opening of like oh my gosh like you got to back out so go ahead and continue but that is just so our listeners understand like this is the perfect way to do this it's only been a few weeks since i even read the book and as i read it i mean i couldn't put it down i would be with my boyfriend and, and he'd be making coffee and I'm reading in between and I'm like, listen to this. So the great part about it was he's like, I'm in. So, you know, so he's even incorporating, you know, certain things as well. And it's just not, we're not going overboard. We're not just cut out all of that stuff. Like right. I don't like to waste money either. So to keep it going slow, I just, you know, stop a, a pill as it runs out, incorporate something new, each week or more of or something but um but so far the, the main thing i've noticed in a couple of weeks time is the brain fog is i don't know how many times better that was the main difference that i uh-huh. saw right away was the brain fog thing yeah. um and then i feel less puffy uh. and and i mean fat <laughs> i mean i i was feeling so fat and and my food was healthy and i was still working out so um, I still work out, even though it's recommended to kind of take it easy. But um, instead of four or five days, I mean, I'm doing maybe three. And one of those days is a yoga day, you know. So um, I am picking it up a little bit more with maybe a fourth day. But I've gone back to some previous type of training that I've done to where I get to take more breaks and it's not as intense. And so that's how I'm kind of working my way through these changes. And I'm super excited to see in another months time even, you know, um, how things are going. Um, I feel like with the collagen that I've added, I don't need that methylated hair pill. So I'm not, I mean, obviously you can see I have very long hair. Um, hair is a big thing to me, especially when you're 20 and you lose your hair and you're wearing yeah. wigs and whatnot at 20 yeah. years old. Um, so I'm very attached to my hair. And so a strand falls out. I'm like, how many is that? And it's like, oh, more than a hundred a day, right? But, um, right. but so, so I, I don't worry about it. I stop that hair pill. I just take my collagen. Um, that's a, a, a major source of protein for me. As I start to incorporate now more fish and um, I'm, I'm doing lots of dairy, uh, which, you know, different diets will tell you, oh, you can't have dairy. And, right. you know, so it's, um, I, I kind of went into it with an open, went into it with an open mind. Um, as long as it's not something that like, I'm just to- completely against eating, you know, and, and good news for even a vegetarian. I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm eating a whole bunch of animal now. Mm. I'm eating fish. And if I craved anything during my vegetarian stages, um, I craved anything was red meat. So from time to time, I would still have it. And that hasn't changed. So I just, you know, every now and then I'll have a burger or something like that, you know, and I just try to stick with like bison or something leaner um, or make sure that I know the source that I get it from. Right. So, um, you know, so I found myself a local farmer again, thanks to Maya. <laughs> but, um, but so, you know, I got red meat from him once. And, um, and so it's just, it's, it's been very simple. It's not, it's not even a diet at all. No, you know? it, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's vegetables and, and yeah. dairy and, you know, it's... orange juice. I mean, it, it's simple. And I'm telling every human being that I run into. <laughs> about it so i mean i think her book sales must have just shot up right and i'm on the phone with my parents like okay so here's what you're going to do this week try this because my dad at now he is i mean he'll be 80 soon um but he has significant heart trouble and and then diabetes and you know so if i can help anybody else feel better get rid of a couple of pills you know without being a doctor um the diet stuff certainly isn't going to hurt him um, so that's, you know, it's just kind of like, it feels like my new life mission is coming into view. <laughs> wow. So what about so, your energy? Like tell, tell a little bit of how your energy's changed. Cause, uh, we had a conversation a couple of days ago and you were saying that too. So I wouldn't say that, you know, um, that I feel like conquering the world or anything like that. Um, however, one of the main things that I would notice during my super stressful before I left the last job is I yawn almost all day long Mm. and that is significantly better. But also I would have days where, um, where I could just 
feel, you know, like, God, I don't feel like doing this today, but I would still go to Zumba class or, or something because it was my best friend that was teaching, you know, and I would just, God, it was dragging. And she's like, come on, like, come to the next class and stay for the next one. And I was like, you're out of your mind. I, <laughs> I feel like crap, you know. Um, and so I've gone, I've also tried something called Omega Wave, which is um, it's similar to a heart rate monitor, but it, it, um, it shows your heart rate variability. It tracks heart rate variability, which is supposed to be a better indicator of your readiness for working out that day. Oh. And as I was doing that, I would get a, a, a red symbol that said, see a doctor and I'm like, this isn't oh good. wow oh, no. <laughs> that can't that can't be good <laughs> that, that also was a sign to me that there is definitely something going on that like i shouldn't be pushing myself like this right. so definitely stress was a part of it but did i need to stop working out how could i all right mm. i'm a trainer i'm a fitness person i can't stop working out you know um so it's just there's been so much there's this and there's that and there's this and that and you have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to figure that out. Um, and I'm certainly not where I need to be or want to be, but I've, I've definitely noticed changes in a very short period of time, you know, and, and I do have to keep telling myself, well, okay, it's only been a couple of weeks. Like don't expect to be yeah. super lean and feeling great, but at the same time, take note and like, you know, what is different? So I still yawn some specifically when it's time to eat. Mm. So it seems like it must be when my blood sugar drops. Mm. Um, but it's it's so much less than it used to be. So that and the brain fog are the main things that I've noticed so far. And I don't feel as fat and puffy. And um, and you know I'm hoping to get back to my pre-issue you know weight and and feel because for me again too, especially as a fitness person, I want to stress that the scale is not your friend. Um, mm. And a lot of us right. have learned that, but the scale is nothing but all of your stuff, yep. you know, so it doesn't have anything to do yeah. with lean or not lean. So, mm -hmm. um, so I tell myself as I get on the scale, but, um, but you know, uh, it's more than just the weight on the scale. It's obviously how you feel and how you feel in your clothes. And that's what I'm looking for. You know, where's that period where I don't feel like everything that I put on, I'm going, I can't wear this. I, I work there. I can't wear this. I mm. look fat like people, you know? Um, so, those are the types of things that I'm just looking forward to experiencing more of a change and then sleeping completely through the night. There's many nights where I don't have to get up and pee anymore. Mm, um, oh, wow. And if That's I big. do, it's once versus like once or twice. Um, because now it's more of like my cat wakes me up and that's why I go pee. Because he's <laughs> on schedule, right? Like if I don't stay that's home happened. where he's not waking me up, I, I sleep through the whole night. Yeah. So, so that's main, uh, a major thing as well. Um, yeah. but so I just see it going, you know, back up the hill instead of just crashing down the hill, uh, That's amazing. you know, as I've seen happen with other women, particularly, but people. Um, yeah. And you've only been, like yeah. you said, only been doing this for a couple of weeks, which is yep. in, in, you know, to be able to connect the dots is one thing, but to be able to connect the dots and see positive change is a total other level of, um, getting yourself to uh, uh, where you need to be healthy, whatever that feels for you. And um, especially because um, you also mentioned um, your doctor was saying something about your kidneys, uh, length of your transplant and how long it should last. And you have a different approach right. and thought to that. Whereas they have this dogma that says, this is it, you know? And so why don't you talk a little bit about that? Cause I, I know. Uh, yes that might be of interest to some people too. Cause it's not like, yeah, that was a good reminder. Yeah. It's Go. not like you're just, uh, you know, changing from a, a baseline you've had to now acquire some real knowledge that has helped even a, a different situation going on. So go ahead and talk about that. Okay. okay so, um, in a month I'll be 13 years post transplant. Um, I was wow. insanely lucky that I was able to get a living related donor. So my little brother was a perfect match for me. And when you need a kidney transplant, they test you for matchability. Um, and there are six points that they test. And so they try to match as many points as they can so that you will have to, you'll have the best success, you know, most luck in not rejecting, as well as like how much medicine you'll take. And so having a living related donor, he also was a six point match. So essentially what that means is it's the next best thing to have in your own kidney, mm. which was, oh, wow. it was, I, I can't even express how lucky I was to have that because 
I've been on a very low dose of, of um, anti-rejection meds and they can be quite nasty. So I really never experienced any side effects from those, except for at one point where the doctor bumped them up too high and that's when kind of hell broke loose again for a short period, immediately turned it around and dropped the dosage back down. But, um, but so a living related is, the life of a kidney these days is 15 to 20 years before you should need another one. And I thought, well, living related, and, and my brother's a trainer too, so he's super fit. I'm like, I'll be good. I'll probably make it without another transplant. Uh, so that's what I've told myself all these years. And now we're at 13 years out, and going through all this stuff, also my numbers are creeping up. And they're like, well, we expect this. You're getting close to the point where you may need the next transplant. And I'm thinking, next transplant? Like, I'm not, I don't know if I can do it. If, um, if we're not at the point of artificial kidney by now, like I'm going to wear, ride this thing to, to the end, you know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. Which I'll, I'll that, really, right? really quickly say that, um, I actually heard a, a, a lot of, um, stuff now that they're actually, um, making, uh, they've actually created a synthetic, well not synthetic, but, uh, wombs. And so they're now creating, um, organs and they're getting into that place of, with the new uh, stem cell work that they're basically getting to that point where they are almost like pulling together kidneys and whatever organs. Wow. And so wow. there is a time frame somewhere in the future where they're going to be creating these things, you know, and yeah. so I wouldn't doubt somewhere in the future that's going to happen quicker than we know. But go ahead. Well, so, go ahead. I won't leave out the obvious. I mean, Obviously, as a young female, I mean, aesthetics for sure have a lot to do with, you know, what you what you care about. But of course, health is number one. But, you know, when I was released from University of Penn, when I first got my transplant, I told them, I said, I don't care what you have to do. I will not take steroids again. I will not. I have stretch marks on my arm and my, my waist where it looks like I've had 50 kids, you know. So, uh, you know, you blow up from it. And... I just remember at 20 years old, I would look in the mirror and I'd look for this, you know, this mark here. I'm like, when that comes back, I know I'll be healthy again, you know, um, because everything just puffs up, you know, mm. and you just, you just blow up. You don't even look like you anymore. So I told them, I said, I don't care what you make me take, but I'm not taking steroids. I'm not. And they said, well, no one gets out without the steroids, right? From a transplant, but we do have a new medication. So if, you know, if we put you on these, this combination of these two meds, we can try you out without the steroids and knock on wood or your head or whatever you need to <laughs> knock on. But, but I never took the steroids afterwards and I've been perfectly fine ever since. Mm. But everything that you take, any, any pills that you take, any medications that you take, your body still has to flush that out. So it's ultimately damaging to your liver and to your kidney. So the thing that is keeping my body from rejecting my kidney is ultimately destroying it anyway. So, that's where, you know, I don't know that I get to not go through another transplant at some point, but um, living a healthy lifestyle and trying to do everything the right way, you know, that obviously is my number one, you know, and not just like, oh, I don't want to get fat and I don't want to look ugly and stuff like that. But, um, but I'm kind of losing my train of thought for a second. Hang on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I will mention, Catherine, that uh, my husband just gave his kidney to a friend. Really? <laughs> just like. Uh, two weeks ago, actually. Awesome. Yeah. How's he feel? Uh, he feels he's he's recovering really quickly. Yeah. Good. And, and his good. friend is doing well. And he's yeah. using the good. bone broth, and he's been yeah. you know like the protocols that he's been using is to help heal his gut and everything that the surgery has helped. I mean, maybe you want to tell the listeners like what he's been doing to help them kind of understand the protocol is the same for the giver and the receiver, you know, and kind of what they do. Or, uh, yeah, well, I think for, you know, for the receiver, they keep the, I believe they cut the ties off of the kidney that wasn't really serving them and then, uh, then reconnect the, the new kidney. Oh, I meant uh, like the but, dietary stuff, like what she's like with the, the Kate Deering's book, like the collagen and, and any other other things that he's doing to help him self repair. You don't have to. Yeah, I was getting, I was getting. Oh, oh okay. I thought you were going to talk about the surgery. <laughs> I was trying I was to like, explain a little uh... bit about what, why he would have the digestive issues because I, the, so, uh, you know, the one who gives the kidney, there's like a space now 
from the kidney that was taken and they have to they have to actually cut the fascia of the colon that was connected to the kidney mm -hmm. so the colon is not connected anymore like in a in a, like a stable place so it has to I guess take it takes time to reattach so of course you can't lift anything over 10 pounds for about four weeks um, but so a lots of rest but also bone he's been doing lots of bone broth collagen um, you know eating really clean food uh, trying to keep his blood sugar levels up he doesn't really do he he does uh, a little bit of dairy um, he's not quite on the same diet as as I do with the Kate Deering but but you know he um, he eats his carbohydrates really mostly consist of like uh, fruit some mm. fruits but that that's really it he's a little bit more um, you know, as far as the advocate for Kate Deering, he might not be quite in that direction so much, but he did, um, he did a little bit more of like a ketogenic thing before he went into the surgery. And then afterwards he went back to normal and it worked for him. So, um, you know, I, you know, to each his own, like everybody kind of has to use their own strategy, but he eats, uh, for restoration right now so that's what he's doing yeah and i'm helping him with that so yeah god bless him for doing that <laughs> yeah it was that's a really amazing. beautiful thing actually for him to do that yeah. um yeah but he's actually recovering really well he used uh some medicinal marijuana you know to, to for the pain instead of all the a lot of the drugs and stuff like that so that really was helpful mm. but for the most part that i think for you know the hardest thing to recover from on that was like uh, really the drugs and the anesthesia that he had to take in during the surgery because you know he's not used to taking in all that stuff and like that's hard on your liver you know so yeah, um, yeah. but uh, but yeah he um, you know we each do different things so as far as our, our diets go so he does what works for him and I do what works for me and um, the Kate Deering uh, approach or I don't even know what it would be called but the Ray Pete inspired approach works better for me for my hormonal balance so Which yeah I'll, I'll kind of play it out there I, because we we know that men's livers are larger than women's and um, there yeah. are a whole other list of things that we have carry more estrogen than them what I kind of believe is that we, we've kind of talked about this in other podcasts is that, you know, um, men can probably stay in the ketogenic kind of uh, diet or, or a little bit different from us, I think, because of I think all so. of those variables change, especially when we age. And so, in, 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 I think depending on how the, the pendulum swings, if a man becomes over dominant in his estrogen, then he may have to lean a little bit more into maybe the Ray Pete inspired diets and stuff like that because of that right. buildup of estrogen. Um, I just feel like sometimes when we talk about this, I just want people to know that what we're saying is that everything is a little bit um, uh, catered to your to what you need to do, and that's mm -hmm. where the um, you know releasing ourselves from the self helplessness and allowing ourselves to be our own authority, which you mentioned a great um, understanding is that you can be your own doctor, um, Catherine. Like what you want to do is really get involved and start just keep researching never stop learning you know so um, you know this is the prime example of why um, I wanted to bring you on the show is just to see, see how how much you have uh, a, been like a great model for other people and, and especially now because you have access to other people and you know you're going to start spreading more of how it's worked for you and mm -hmm. you know and in and, and that part of it so well, I do yeah. remember what I was saying. Um, so thank you for reminding me. Um, what's <laughs> happening right now is that um, I'm due to go back and see the holistic doc two weeks from now. I just had blood work today. So I'm going to be interested to see what's going on. Now, I assume that she's not going to be too happy because I'm pretty much like not following her protocol, right? Um, but regardless, I'll get to see if any changes have happened blood work wise um, and in addition I am going to be seeing my nephrologist within the next few weeks also so um, you know the last time I had blood work from both places my creatinine from my kidneys was starting to creep up and um, everything was starting to look a little bit worse and even though the doctor was going oh but we expect this I'm thinking mm, let's see what happens now 
So I'm really, really interested to see in a few weeks time, a few months time, you know, is anything changing just based on what I've done with my nutrition based on Ray Pete and Kate Deering and, and the other people that, you know, that she pretty much wrote her book from. And, um, yeah, Berta, and Berta Barnes I, and Berta Barnes, mm -hmm. Constant Martin. Yep. There's a whole yep. list of um, researchers that, like, um, Berta Barnes has a great book about hyperthyroidism, which is mainly where most people are not hyperthyroid, but they're having the symptoms. So, um, you know, we're trying to help people understand it. You know, it's a lot about the blood sugar. It's about the how your um, energy in the day is carrying you through and how it's how you're sleeping at night and all these things have similarities so we, even reading those kind of books give a real enlightenment to where um, we're so similar we've got so much going on that we just um, want people to understand you know hey you've got um, a lot of resources you can look at and, and if something doesn't res resonate with you just keep researching keep looking because there's a little bit more depth and depth information beyond uh, Kate's book but it's the best starter that I've ever come apart upon and absolutely yeah, yeah. I, I agree agree yeah so totally. that's pretty much it. We're in this. Let's see what happens now. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to like uh, follow up with you later. And see how you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Catherine. Yeah, that my was pleasure. incredible. Yeah. I couldn't be more thankful to Maya for you know mentioning this to me, and because I feel like it's going to be a life changing. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. That, that's so inspired by your story too, especially having the personal experience that I just went through with my husband, it's like, that is a, man, that is like a crazy hard thing to go through both on both ends. So, yeah. um, my God. Yeah. Well, he's a hero. So, just <laughs> so like my you. brother was. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, is, it, it, I'm it's glad yeah. that I'm able to affect other people. I mean, in my position, yeah. I'll be able to, you know, help other people. So yeah. if, they, if they choose to listen. But. I think so. Yeah, yeah and I, I think we could have um, a great impact uh, where we are. And what we can do is keep um, highlighting, like, how easy it is. Like, you know, by doing the small things and just not changing everything at once, you know, and, and having that patience with the change is, is so vital. Like, and then having support. Like, this is what we wanted the Integrate Your Podcast to be about, is to help people have a community. So, like, Catherine, um, I, I'm going to connect you to our Facebook um, uh, integrate online your, community. Online community, and we're going to, um, okay. you know, you maybe you can give your progress report after you oh, go that'd to your be doctor. Great. Yeah. There's a follow okay. up, and then, um, you know, and we're just going to start building up uh, more information of how people can reach out to anybody and start telling their story or at least kind of help each other even more with uh, where to find information. So, um, awesome. yeah. So, yeah. Catherine, thank you so much for being on our yeah, show. Yeah, thank you, Catherine. Sure. Thanks and, for inviting um, me. Is there any way that people can reach you personally that you would like to tell? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, you can reach me by email. And my email is Catherine, C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, C-S-C-S, -C -S, as in Catherine Sam, Catherine Sam, at gmail.com. And that would be the best way. Or you can also find me on Facebook. It's Catherine Luciano. I thought cool. the CSCS was a co coach in uh, strength and fitness. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> it's certified strength and fitness. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. funny. <laughs> so thank you again for being on yeah. our show, and we'll talk to you really soon. Thanks, Allison, for once again another thank great you. show. And uh, yeah. we'll see you all guys. Thank you, guys. We'll see thank you guys you. again. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.